Allah said to them, now go with these two signs to Pharaoh and his people and tell him to release the children of Israel and stop using them as slaves and oppressing them now, immediately. And tell him, we are messengers from your Lord to you. Worship Allah and give in. And so they left. Allah said to them, I will be with you listening and looking. I will be with you all the way. Do not be afraid. He reaches the door of the palace and the guards stop him and his brother. How? And they said, you're not allowed to enter. Stay back. And then Musa said to him, we are messengers. And they didn't know who he was. So they let him in. And that was the first support from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As soon as he entered, he sees Pharaoh and Pharaoh immediately recognizes him. He looks at Pharaoh and says, O oh Pharaoh, we are messengers from Allah, our Lord, to you. Give up what you're doing, worship Allah alone and send the children of Israel with us. And Pharaoh replies, don't you people see that I do not know any other God for you but myself? Look at the rivers beneath my command and the people beneath my command and all the wealth and everything. You can't survive without me. So who are you going to choose as an authority? It's a hidden threat, almost. You are a child with us. We raised you. We looked after you. We educated you. And you did that crime that you know what I'm talking about that you did. As though he is threatening Musa, telling him, you better, you better shape up right now because you've crossed the boundaries here. And remember what you did. And this is how you repay us, he says. And Musa replies, And this favor that you are mentioning upon me, thinking that I owe you something, in that you have taken my people, the children of Israel, and made them slaves, and you dare to say me that I owe you a favor? Look what you've done to our people and all of us. And that is why he turned to his people, to the courtiers and the high-ranking people in his palaces. And he said to them, can't you listen to this guy? Listen to what he's saying. Fir'aun said to him, okay then. And what is this Lord of the worlds that you are talking about? And he turned to his people and said, don't you people see that I do not know any other God for you but myself? Look at the rivers beneath my command and the people beneath my command and all the wealth and everything you can't survive without me so who are you going to choose as an authority it's a hidden threat almost musa says to him he is the lord of the heavens and the lord of the earth and he's the lord of everything in between him and he controls it all you don't control it pharaoh so pharaoh goes to him okay so what about all the people before us like our ancestors what are you telling me those tens of thousands of those millions of people for tens of thousands of years ago, all of them, those who worship other gods, they're all on the wrong. Musa Salam replied by saying, their, their case is with my Lord. They're now with God and God will judge them according to what he knows. I wasn't there. So Pharaoh turns around and he realizes he's stuck. He said, listen, Moses, if you were to take a God beside me, meaning an authority in my land beside me, I will put you into prison. This is how tyrants silent the truth. And so this is when Musa alayhi salam said to him, Okay, hold on. What if I were to bring you some signs, some proof of what I'm saying? And that's when Fir'aun had to listen. He said to him, All right, bring me the proof if you are among the truthful. Musa has now made Fir'aun get into a situation of truth and false based on evidence suddenly Musa alayhi salam Allah said to him throw your staff immediately without speaking Musa alayhi salam throws his stick behold his stick turned into 
what appeared as a large snake. Clear, everybody could see it. It was not a vision, it was not an illusion, it was literally from a stick to a large snake. Now this is scientifically impossible. But miracle, yes. Allah can do that. That's how it scared Fir'aun and the people around him. As the snake was on the floor, slithering in front of Pharaoh and the people, Musa Alayhi then places his hand into his pocket and releases it. His hand was as, as white as snow, with nur coming out of it. Very clear for everybody to see. Musa Alayhi salam said the following words, Now, this is from your Lord, the one who made for you this earth, for you to serve you. O Fir'aun, the earth is serving you. My Lord is the one that gave you that. And look how he gave you the rivers and every type of plantation for you to eat and drink from and for your livestock to graze from. And he released from you a biodiversity from all sorts of plantation for you to eat and enjoy and let your livestock graze. If you think these are my signs, then look at these great signs that are happening before your eyes for people of understanding. Instead, Fir'aun and his courtiers said, No, you have come to scare us with your sorcery, Moses. Woe to you, do not say lies. You know that what you saw in my staff and in my hand was not sorcery. For you to say it was sorcery and imagine that I was a messenger of God, if that's the truth, right? And my Lord really is the God and you've called his work sorcery. This is the, the worst you can say about God. I advise you one more time. You know it's not sorcery. Don't say lies on God. You are not lying about me. I'm just a man. You're lying about God. And I am his messenger. And what you saw is not sorcery. But Allah says that they were full of pride and arrogance. So they said, we don't care. Pharaoh said, we will bring you a greater sorcery than your sorcery. Now Moses, he didn't want, to, he didn't want it just as easy as that. He says to him, okay, I accept the challenge. Tell me where and when. Fir'aun said to him, You choose a time, whatever you like, Moses. I'm ready to challenge you anywhere. So Moses, this was in his favor. Musa Islam said, Your meeting I choose is the day of the national holiday. And there was a place where everybody gathered for celebration. In the heart of the day. I want everything to be clear. When Fir'aun got this, he thought that he was just going to choose something in the palace. And Moses chose for the entire nation to witness in bright day on a celebration day where nobody can forget because then they'll say, this happened. Nobody will forget it. Pharaoh had to think about it. He goes back to his courtiers, Allah says in the Quran, he went to his courtiers and got their advice. He's very careful. This is now, it means that if Moses is to win, if Moses is to overcome, my entire kingdom and everything we believe in will be shattered. But if I win, my authority is established forever. They decided that they should do it. So bring all your power and come in a row and we shall see who is the triumphant. Fir'aun sent out a news to all the sorcerers of the land. He wanted to get the best sorcerers and he said, this is the day of div dividing between truth and false. This is it. So you sorcerers better do your best work. The sorcerers all got together and they came to Pharaoh and said, what's the issue? He goes, don't worry. He's got his staff and he made it into a, into a snake and I don't know what. The, the sorcerer said, well, you know, this doesn't sound like sorcery to us. But then Pharaoh said to them, our kingdom will be gone. So then the sorcerers thought, hmm, okay, let's get a benefit out of this. They said, if we don't go ahead, Pharaoh will, will do something to us anyway. And we've got a chance of winning. Maybe it is sorcery. So they said to Pharaoh, if we were to do our work, will you reward us? And Pharaoh said, I will not only reward you, I will give you high positions in the palace. You'll have great positions of authority. So what happened? The sorcerers got together and Musa salam, faced them with Harun. And they said to him, would you like to throw your staff or should we throw ours first? He said, no, you throw yours first. So then they threw their staffs and their ropes. Then suddenly it appeared to Moses as if their ropes and staffs were slithering and running. Musa actually felt a fear inside of him. We said to him through Jibreel alayhi salam, do not be afraid, you will be triumphant. Did their ropes and staffs turn into snakes? No, they did not. 
Did their staffs and ropes appear as if they were snakes? No, it appeared to their eyes as if their ropes and staffs were slithering and moving. They did sihr on the eyes of people. So much so that even Musa could see their ropes slithering. He, and this shows us that even a prophet and a messenger of God can be tricked by sorcery. This type of sorcery was called sorcery of illusion. How they did it, I don't know. But what they did was something to the people's minds and the people's perceptions. Musa Islam got scared and then Allah said to him, throw what is in your right hand, his staff. It will put a stop to what they are doing. Allah threw his staff, it turned into a python and people somehow became aware of the trick. They saw reality from false. When had that happened, in other words, they saw the staff and the ropes normal. And they realized the python that of Musa salam was real. What was happening in the meantime? It astonished the magicians. So the magicians actually stopped what they were doing in their illusions. And Allah says an amazing verse. The magicians were forced to go into sujood, into prostration. Something, a force, made the magicians overwhelmed by what they saw to the point that their minds and hearts converted to Islam and believed in the one true God just by what they saw. Why? The sorcerers are the experts in their sorcery and they knew that what Musa had done was not sorcery but a miracle. And that was enough for the sorcerers. They put their heads down and they lifted their heads up and said, we all believe in the Lord of all the worlds, just as Musa says. As soon as they said that, before anybody could follow them and be tricked, Pharaoh stands up in rage and what does he say? He uses trickery words. You believed in him before I commanded you? Because you want to take over my kingdom. So this was a plot by you and Aaron and Moses. And so he caused doubt in the people. Oh, so it's a plot, it was a conspiracy, it was a plan. You know what the sorcerer said to him? They were so convinced in their belief that the people heard this and made some of them secretly convert, secretly. They were afraid of Pharaoh. They said to him, we have believed in the Lord of Aaron and Musa, Moses. Do whatever you want with us, O Pharaoh. You will not make us convert back to our falsehood. And they died as true worshippers and believers in Musa alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then describes, he says, he talks about Jannah straight after it, saying that they entered paradise in which they lived happily ever after.